Welcome to Sunday night service. We're glad to have you tonight. Pastor is out sick tonight, so pray for him and his family. They've, they've all been down with sickness and a lot of it going around, but uh, pray for him tonight. We'll have a great service anyhow. Let's start with the word of prayer tonight. Brother Orr, would you mind praying for us tonight? And then we'll let Brother Hunter is going to lead us in a couple songs. Thank you. Brother Hunter, come lead us in a couple songs. All right, while we stand together as we sing our first song, There is Power in the Blood. Song lyrics on the screen on that verse. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power. Wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. On that last, would you do serve? For Jesus, your King, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. Sing, you may be seated, and we'll sing one more song and then head over and do some announcements. And let's sing, Isn't the Love of Jesus Something Wonderful? On that verse, there will never be a sweeter story, story of the Savior's love divine, love that brought him from the realms of glory, just to save a sinful soul like mine. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Oh, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful, wonderful it is to me? Boundless as the universe around me, reaching to the farthest soul away. Saving, keeping love, it was that found me. That is why my heart can truly say, Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful it is to me. Love beyond our human comprehending. Love of God in Christ, how can it be? This will be my theme and never ending. Great redeeming love of Calvary. Oh, isn't the love of Jesus something Wonderful it is to me. Amen. It's one of my favorite.
spirits to lead, and thank you, Brother Hunter, for leading that tonight. We have a few announcements for the church, and don't forget about these. Um, don't forget um, your commitment card. If you still need to get in a commitment card for the building fund, there's still time to do that. And there's some cards on the back table back there, um, either a one-time gift or a monthly commitment. Also, if you just want to put some in the offering, there's still time for that as well. Just make sure on your offering envelope to mark it as building. That way, when they count, they'll know where to put that money. So make sure you do that. Don't just throw it in the offering plate. It'll go into the general um, tithing. We don't want that to happen. So make sure if you want to do that, it's still uh, time to do that. Praise the Lord for the building banquet the other night. Um, and then there's a security meeting. The time, the date of that has been changed. I believe it's till next next Sunday. So if you um, are part of security or would like to be, um, be a part of that meeting. I believe it's next Sunday. And then April 10th is a teachers meeting as well. And there may be some other meetings. Brother Hunter, is there any other meetings that um, there was a cleaning meeting? Okay, so I think that's all the meetings. And then don't forget about our Easter outreach. We have Easter tracks on the back. And if you'll just take a stack, um, all it takes is two a day. If you can get out two a day, that's not a lot. Just hand out two per day. You can get out a whole stack. Um, take more than that if you'd like to, but we want to reach uh, more people for Christ and, and remember the, um, his resurrection. So if you get a chance, stop by the table and grab some Easter tracks as well. And let's see, are there any birthdays that we missed or this week? Any, anybody have a birthday? Is it your hand up right there? Yes. Miss Kate, where is this Miss Kate here? Oh, she's, is it Kate's birthday? I won't ask her how old she is, but happy birthday. Anybody else? Birthday way in the back? Yes, sir. Mason, how old is gonna, Mason going to be? 12 years old, amen. Praise the Lord. Mason, yes, fam? Autumn's coming up on Saturday. Good. Did anybody else? She couldn't. She didn't even remember she had her own birthday. Huh? <laughs> anybody else? Birthday? Anybody? Anybody with a birthday? Do you know how to play Happy Birthday, Sister? That's okay. Let's let's do it a cappella then. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. May God bless you and keep you. Happy birthday to you. Good. Any anniversaries? Any anniversaries for upcoming days? No? All right. We'll have one more song then, Brother Hunter, for before the message. And prepare your hearts for the Lord tonight and, and pray how he could speak to you. And Brother Hunter, come and, and lead us in this song. All right. Let's sing this last one. And uh, Jesus paid it all. Sober our minds to get ready for the message this evening. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe. Sin Bring the word. Turn in your Bibles tonight to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. I love seeing the kids sing up front here and 
and everywhere. Actually, I love seeing kids sing, get being a part, and even trying to lead the music. That's pretty cool. And uh, future leaders of the church, and and love seeing that. Hebrews chapter twelve. <clears throat> I want to talk about a few things before I start the message tonight. First of all, wasn't the building banquet great? Wasn't it awesome? Um, if you didn't get a chance to come, the video is out, I believe, online. So go by and watch that video. And um, it's not that God needs our money, right? He owns everything. He doesn't really need the thousands of dollars. He has it all. He just wants us to show if we have faith enough to believe in him, right? So these rocks don't really mean a lot, but they are good reminders. We use these as reminders of what he can do through us. And what a good meeting that was, a nice video we saw about the history of our church and about the things that are coming. Um, I first came to Faith Baptist Church on New Horizons. I believe that's the street it was. And we visited there, but we didn't actually start um, joining until we were in the tent over on New Stein. Everybody, who, mem who remembers the tent? Anybody remember the tent? Yeah, we have some great stories about the tent, right? And all the water running through and the, and the cables, like tonight it's windy, the cables would buckle down and you'd think, oh man, are we safe in this thing? <laughs> and and that, that tent was huge. It was a big tent. Um, I don't know. I've not seen a uh, large a tent as that. Maybe at a circus or something. But that was a that was a large tent, and uh, we were scared of the lights falling down. And I remember being in choir, and after choir in the summertime, you'd be just drenched with sweat, and everybody would fight to go to the swamp cooler. You remember that? They would want to get 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 around and put their coats out and say, "Ooh, that feels so good." But uh, those were the days, right? Those were the days. But God brings us from that, and thank the Lord, He gives us a place to to meet now. And and although that was a great place, great memories, and God did great works there, we're looking forward to what he does in the future Amen. with the building. And like I said, God doesn't need our funds, but he uses people um, of faith to uh, accomplish his will and his word um, and to reach souls. Um, stagnant churches don't do anything as far as building programs. They'll just stay. And um, not that we're looking for numbers or anything, but God is interested in people and reaching people. And so there will probably always be some type of building program or maintenance or always the next step. Don't ever think that it's ever going to stop. It's going to keep on going, right? And so um, be a part of that if you can. And uh, it, it, what a blessing that was um, uh, Friday night. And, and watch that video if you get a chance. And then I want to talk to you about um, we're going to be leaving soon, my wife and I. And it's sad. I'm going to cry. Sorry. <laughs> um, we, we have about two months left here. I just wanted to... Uh, talk to you a few minutes about that before I get into the message. We are, we are excited. I got a call from a church. I wasn't expecting the call, but I got a call to go over to another school in North Carolina and to be a high school teacher for math and English. And uh, I'm also going to be on pastoral staff there as well. And you pray for me. I'm scared to death. It's a bigger, a little bit bigger, and, and uh, that the school is not the same as our school. And so there's a lot of change that's going to take place, and moving is tough. But you pray that God will use us. That's what I want most of all is to be used. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, you, you pray for us. Thanks for all of your, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Your involvement in our kids' lives and our lives. Um, if you've been a part of us, uh, we, we just want to serve the Lord. And so I, I thank you for everyone that's impacted my kids or us. And, and uh, I know there's more I could say. I could start naming names, but I would leave people out. I don't want to do that. But, but I appreciate all of you that that have been a part of our, our lives. Um, this might be my last time to speak. I may speak one more time, but uh, thank you for your investment. And, uh, and stay, stay in, we'll talk about this tonight, but stay in the race. Stay at Faith Baptist Church and, and, and do what God wants you to do, and he'll bless your life for it. Um, I hope my family and my kids uh, serve the Lord, stay serving the Lord, but you just never know. Uh, Satan could knock them off any time, but I hope, I hope they'll serve the Lord the rest of their life, and that's our goal. And that should be your goal as well. And so um, pray for us as we leave. We'll, we'll definitely miss you all. And we've been here well, about 16 years or so. And, and it's going to be a bittersweet time. We're excited, yet scared at the same time. But God's going to use us there. And, and so uh, you pray for us as we go. Okay? Turn to Hebrews chapter 12. You're there, Hebrews chapter 12. <clears throat> Let's look at verse 1 tonight. I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. <clears throat> The Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, 
despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessing tonight. Lord, we pray that you would be with the message tonight. Lord, uh, speak through me. I pray you'd help me to say those things that you'd have me to say. Lord, help me to be able to follow my notes and, and clear my mind and, and help me to say what you want me to say. And I pray that it will be a help to someone tonight. And I pray you bless the rest of this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Nowhere in the Bible are we promised that Christ, the Christian life is going to be an easy life. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, oh, it's going to be a bed of roses. It's all going to be uh, ease after we get saved. There are some that tell you, Oh, Christians have a great life. It's so easy. Um, they're never going to have worries and troubles anymore. That's the, the Bible doesn't talk about that. No, in fact, if you turn to John chapter 16, John 16. Verse 33, the Bible says otherwise. Toward the middle of the verse, but the verse says, "These things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace." In the world ye shall have tribulation, there it is, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So just because we're saved, just because we're on our way to heaven, does not mean that life is not going to be filled with trials and tribulations. Um, hard times are going to come across our paths. Um, some people will be tempted to quit on God because of this, and they'll be tempted to drop out of the race. And the race we talked about is in Hebrews chapter well, chapter 12, um, let us run the race with patience. And the t if I had to title this tonight, I would probably just title it Stay in the Race, Stay in the Race. And um, the, the writer of Hebrews here is, is, is um, likening our journey to a race that we run, and, uh, but, but this life, the race is not easy. It's a difficult race. We're, it, it's uh, tough at sometimes. Sometimes the it starts getting steep. And it's hard to run up that hill, and, or trials come, things come. But, he, but the writer here in Hebrews is comparing his Christian life to a race. And it's not, he's not talking about a 100-yard dash either. He's talking about like a marathon, like a long, long race. It's not this quick thing. It's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be soon. It's, it's going to be a long, grueling process. It's not this short little race that we think about. It's, it's a marathon. And a race requires patience. It, it requires endurance. It requires preparation. And um, I, I am not in a physical shape tonight to run a race physically, but spiritually, I hope I can run the race spiritually, and you can too. Um, we're not in the, sh we've, no, I don't believe any of us, but maybe Brother Chris, maybe Brother Lewis have r did some running, but I, I, I definitely couldn't run a race, uh, especially a marathon. But this is talking about in our Christian life, we have a race to run, and we, we need to run with patience the race that is set before us. And um, we see so many runners dropping out on every hand. Um, people leaving church, people falling into deep sin, or whatever it might be, uh, going away from God. It's, it's sad. It's sad. It's discouraging in the race uh, to, for, for the patience for the Lord. And, and uh, trials come, and, and things knock them off course, and, it, and it's sad to see. But it's my goal tonight just to teach you some steps on staying in the race. And I want it to be like Paul says at the end in, in 2 Timothy 4, verse 7. It says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. And that's what I want to talk about tonight is staying in the race, keeping, keeping the faith. Um, number one, I want to consider the saints. Consider the saints. In the previous chapter here in Hebrews chapter 11, if you would turn there and le just look over Hebrews chapter 11. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11 is known as the, some people call it the hall of faith, hall of fame for those that have had faith. He mentions many of the great heroes and heroines of the faith. We have um, Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, and Sarah. We have Isaac and Jacob, Moses, Joshua, Rahab, and many other different heroes of the faith. And it, it points to they, them running their race and ending their race. So we can consider the saints, first of all. Um, these people were the great cloud of witnesses that it's talking about. And um, they... They, uh, you, as you, as it were, they're they're cheering us on now. I don't know if how it works in heaven if if people are actually looking down, but I can just imagine and go, go, go. David is saying, or Moses is saying, go, keep going. Yeah, you need to finish the race, um, as it were. And and, and uh, we consider them when we think about our race. If they could do it, we can do it. Um, these weren't extra extraordinary people. Um, these were just normal people. Um, the Bible says that Elijah in James was just a man of like passions like we are. 
and he, he had the same struggles that we face, and all, all these people in the, in the hall of faith, uh, we think, oh, there's some great, they're, they're a great Christian, and maybe they were, but um, they were just people, just common people with the same struggles and trials that we have. So first of all, we want to consider the saints, and one of the things we want to consider that they have already run their race. They didn't run perfectly, but they ran it. Um, they weren't they weren't perfect. They didn't do everything right. Um, they weren't always on the right track. They probably had to get back some a few times, and but they ran their race nonetheless. And that's what we want to do too. We want to keep on uh, keep on running for the Lord. Um, if if they can run the race, so can we. So can we. Um, I, I want to serve the Lord with my life. I hope you do too. But sometimes there are things that cause us to get off of that race, causes us to get over up in the weeds somewhere sometimes, and. Sometimes we have to pull ourselves back. Okay, you know, I gotta get, I gotta get focused here again. Get fat, focused on the race. We want to stay in the race. Um, and they have another thing. They have already earned their reward. We know there's a reward for those. In, in verse, let's see, verse number says, "The race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the Author and Finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself." lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. And, and then in 2 Timothy it says, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. There are rewards for this race. There are rewards. And these saints that have gone on before us, they've earned their rewards. And we can look to them, and one day we're going to receive the rewards for our race as well. And it's not to pat ourselves on the back. We're good at that. We love ourselves. I always talk people to run the race as well. Don't stop running. Don't stop don't get off the path. It's, it's such a, uh, an easy thing to do, but try to focus focus on staying in the race. I want you to do that. And this this talks about there being a reward um, for, for those that run the race well. Another thing they've done, they have revealed that God is reliable. God, God keeps his word. They are witnesses to the faithfulness of God. These people that went before us in Hebrews chapter 11 and, and all who have gone on before past these, have, they, they have revealed that God is faithful and God keeps his word. Um, he, he doesn't lie. God does not lie. His word is truth. And we can trust his word. And, um, he, and since, since God, uh, since he can be trusted, we know that one day we'll be with them in heaven. Looking forward to that day. But the Bible here calls them witnesses. And they're witnesses to the faithfulness of God. And just like Moses, Abraham, and David, all of these were heroes of the faith. But we can do the same things. We can live for Christ. We can stay on that race as well. Um, and we can, we can be a dependable Christian for the Lord. And so, so first of all, consider the saints of old. Um, not, uh, it's, it's an old time back in Hebrews 11, but we can look to them and say, oh, I, I can run my race if they ran the race. I can do that. Um, it might be tough. Yes, it's going to be tough. It, it, it's going to have some challenges, but I can stay on the racetrack because these people of old um, stayed on. So consider the saints. And then secondly, consider yourself. Consider yourself. Um, to run a race, you have to make proper preparations. Um, when there's a race to run, the wise runner will carefully make preparations. I have a little story of a race that I once ran. Um, I was in, I was raised in uh, Missouri, and my church was in a little town called Palmyra, Missouri. And one uh, particular summer, we were raising funds um, to, I, I believe it was for camp or something, I don't remember exactly what it was for, but we were going to run to the next town over, which was 13 miles. And people were pledging money. They're saying, I'll give you this much per mile if you run to the next town. That, that seemed like, oh, 13 miles, no big deal. A, a teenage guy said, oh, that's easy. You know how the teenage guys, oh, I'm strong, I'm tough, right? And so we decided the teenage guys were going to just take off and start running and, and get there first so we can get the prize. And so we took, me and my friends take off. We start the first mile, great, we're running. And by a mile and a half, we're getting so tired. I mean, we're getting... We're getting where we can't breathe. You know how that feeling is? And we're about, we don't even make it two miles, and we're already pooped, and, and uh, we, can't, we can't make it any farther. We stop, and we walk the rest of the way. We walked to like 11 miles after that. So we thought it was going to take us just a short time, and it ends up being like three or four hours later we arrive at our destination. And so that race was not prepared for, not at all. And so a race takes preparation, especially a marathon. You can't just run a marathon without preparing it. And we thought we had it that day, and, and boy, we were, we were sorely uh, displeased when, when we, we, we just ran out of stamina, ran out of energy. The girls were laughing at us. The girls just walked the whole way, but they were laughing at us. And, and, but, uh, but stay in the race. Um, it takes proper preparation. Um, we'll never 
reach our full uh, potential for the Lord unless we're willing to make the preparation and the sacrifices that is necessary to run the race. And uh, God wants us to run our race and do it with him, not a physical race, but a spiritual race. And in, um, here in verse number one, we'll find that there's a few ways we can do this. One of them is found in the middle of the verse. It says, let us lay aside every weight. So lay aside all of your weights. And this is not necessarily sins, but weights can be um, just innocent things in and of themselves. They're not necessarily sin, but it can, draw you, it can drag you away from your race. Um, we don't want to fall into those things and, and cause them to get us off the track. Um, we want to slow down. We want to get these weights off of us, and uh, we want to we make sure that we stay away from the weights that, that, will, that will weight us down and, and keep us um, uh, not effective in the race. Um, a heavy person isn't going to run a marathon, right? If you have a lot of weight on you or if you're big like me, maybe, um, you're not going to be able to run a marathon. You need It takes preparation. But there are some weights we have as Christians we need to lay off, and sometimes we just need to say, Lord, I, I've been doing this or this or that too much. I need to get away from that. It's causing me to not walk with Christ like I should. Um, there, there's a lot of, lot of things we could mention. There's a, I have a few here. One of them is um, seeking entertainment instead of fellowshipping with God. Um, it's a big one nowadays. The entertainment is so powerful in the things we watch. Um, seeking possessions and the things that this, of this world instead of seeking God. Possessions can get you down covetousness and be careful of that. It's a weight. It's not necessarily wrong to have possessions. It's not necessarily wrong to watch entertainment. But these things can weigh us down if we get our focus off of God. Um, giving your attention to things like music or television shows or movies or things that don't focus our mind on the Lord. This can be a weight. I'm not saying it's sin. That, that's, up, that's between you and God. But these things can cause us to get away from the Lord and, and cause us to kind of get off in the weeds a little bit and not be on the race like we should be. So let's be careful of those things that weight us down. Not necessarily sins, but things that, man, I, I know I could be closer to God if I would just get away from that a little bit more. If I would focus on him more, give more time to him, it would help me run my race better. That's just what I'm saying. Um, but uh, we want to do, we want to do things that build us up and make us stronger in the Lord. And we need to remove some of those weights in our lives that God, um, that God does not want to be there. Satan allows those. And, and then I find secondly, it says lay aside um, the sin, lay aside the sin, which just so easily beset us. And these are our little besetting sins. We all know what our besetting sins are. We don't want to talk about them individually tonight, but every one of us have these sins that are very difficult for us to conquer. Um, mine might not be yours. Yours is different than mine, but we all have these sins that are hard um, to handle. I've personally never, um, I've never drank alcohol, and it doesn't really affect me. I, it doesn't entice me, but if that's your besetting sin, I know it's tough. I've heard that it's very tough. And yet, mine might be lying. I might, mine might have a hard time with lying, but you don't have any hard, any time with that. Or, you you could name a hundred sins: pride, uh, um, whatever it might be. Um, you know what your besetting sin is, and those things will keep us from running the race like Christ wants us to run. So get away, get away, uh, give away the sins, uh, confess them, uh, bring it to the Lord. The Bible says, if we're faithful and just, He's faithful and just to forgive our our sins. And so. Take those sins to the Lord, um, but we could mention we could mention sins, but but you know what they are. You know what you what you struggle with. I know what I struggle with. Um, those things need to be lay, laid aside as well. And uh, these these in our life will become it, it'll it'll drag us down so much. Sin sin will take you the wrong direction. It'll get you out of church. It'll get you off the path real quick, uh, especially if you stay in your sin and don't get it taken care of. You'll, you'll, you'll never expect where you could be down the road. You'll, you thought, oh, I'll never, I'll never get out of church. I'll never do this. I'll never do that. But down the road, you're, you're way off course. You've gone way, way the other direction that God wants you to. So you've got to get rid of those sins, those besetting sins. The Bible talks about they were running with their robes on in, in this particular passage, and these robes were getting in the way of their running. It was tripping them up. And, and uh, that's what the sins do. They trip us up on our race uh, for the Lord. So, so get that sin out of our lives and, and confess it and stay close to God. Walk with him, and I believe that will help you on your race. Um, and then we must run with patience. Patience is a hard thing to have, especially over the long haul. We're going to have a lot, a lot of trials and, and tribulations as we run this race. It's going to take a lot of patience. And, and um, this, 
this talks about a person that's full of trials in his life. Uh, it's super hard to have patience. That's why I think so many people quit because patience is a hard uh, character trait to have. Um, it's hard to be patient, hard to wait on things, right? When we, when we want something, we want it now, especially in our instant society we live in. We want everything uh, microwave mentality, right? We want to push a button, it's there. Um, we have, we're, we're having all these neat inventions nowadays and makes everything so easy. But when it comes to our spiritual Christian life, we need to learn patience, especially through the, tr for, uh, through the difficult times. Uh, uh, God is able to help us through these trials, but the Lord has a purpose for those trials and temptations. Right. Right. But we should, we should use them for God's glory and work through them and realize that he has a purpose for them. And um, in, the, in Romans 8, 28, it's a very familiar passage. It says, we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them that are called according to his purpose, um, but it takes patience. It's not, a, it's not a quick race like I was saying in the beginning. It's, it's a marathon. It's a long race. Be patient. Um, the word, the race set before us, it means we have our own race to run. Um, this challenges us because sometimes people want to run other people's races. They, they want to get off somewhere where they're, they're not really supposed to be, and they're, they're looking at other people and comparing themselves and saying, ooh, I'd like to do what they're doing, when God has their own specific race for them. And th the race is set before you. You have your own specific race. You have a will of God that's for you, and it's not for anybody else. And so keep your eye focused on what the Lord wants you to, wants you to do. Everyone get, has their um, gifts and talents that God has given them. Um, I probably could not be a bus mechanic at the church. I know very little about engines, and I couldn't hardly tell you. I could probably pull out a few parts and tell you what it is, but I wouldn't probably be a good... Uh, good uh, mechanic but I could sing and um, I can I can use that for the Lord but maybe you maybe you are great at me uh, mechanic work or maybe you ha maybe you're good at administration and God has gifted you in that and maybe that would be what the Lord would have your race to be or maybe it's um, maintenance or maybe I can't work with the kids in the nursery but maybe someone could so it's, there's all these different things that God uh, gives us talents and things to do and just just um, improve on your talent. Every time, um, every time I lead the singing, I, I uh, I'm quiet. You guys know that. I I get sick. I get sick leading the music still, and I've done it a long time. But I still, even though even though I I love doing it, it's hard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So challenge yourself a little bit. Get out of your comfort zone. Do something for the Lord, and um, He'll use you. But but don't try to take someone else's race. Don't think you have to be. I'm not a preacher. I don't claim to be a preacher. I don't want to take the preacher's spot, right? I don't want to take that spot. And so um, get in your own race. Do what you're called to do. And, and we, we get our eyes focused on other people so much, we, we get off of our race sometimes. But God has a place for you. He has a race for you. We're not in a competition with each other. With each other. We're, we're all on the same team. My job is not to outrun you or you outrun me. Our job is to glorify God and, and, and run for him and to to get to heaven and hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant someday. It's not, it's not about anybody else. It's actually not about what we can gain for our own selves as well as all the glory and honor to him. And so uh, run your race for you, the race that God placed before you. And maybe you'll have to ask the Lord, ask the Lord man, I don't know, Lord, what, what, what is it you'd have me to do? And he'll show you. It might take a little time, but he'll show you. You can spend time with him, and he'll, he'll guide you in the way you should go. Um, it, it doesn't have to be a mystery. You know what you're good at. You know what your talents are. And use those for the Lord. He'll bless you for that. Um, but, but we shouldn't um, look at others. We shouldn't, we shouldn't try to outrun others or get in their lane. But stay in your lane and do what God wants you to do. Um, we have to also guard our priorities. Um, um, the Bible says um, that Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our, of our faith, um, Jesus should be our focal point when we run. Jesus should be our focal point. Um, no other person should be on our, on our mind when we're serving the Lord. It should be just him. We shouldn't be aiming to please anybody else. I know it's so hard in our society. We wanna, we're people pleasers. We want to we wanna, uh, see what we can do to be seen. But it's all, it's all because of him. Um, our primary um, duty is to run toward him. Run toward him. Um, and we should be a Christian runner. And don't quit. Keep on running. Keep on running. On that day when I was running, I quit for a, sh a short time because we were to totally exhausted. But in the Christian race, in the spiritual race, you got to keep on running. Don't quit. Be that runner. Just run, run, run. 
Um, and then lastly, I, I, I want to consider the Savior. We, we, considered, um, we consider ourselves, we consider the saints of old, but I want to consider the Savior, and this is the main, the main purpose is in, in our running the race is, is the Savior. Um, and consider his race. He had a hard race, Jesus Christ. Had, had the, he went through so much uh, ridicule and, and pain and, and um, just despised by people. And I'll go over some of the things he went through here in a minute. But he, he endured the cross for you and I. And if, if, if we can look at his example, we can surely run our race. And uh, he was our ultimate example. Consider, consider the reasons he, ra he raced. In verse 2 it says, Who for the joy that was set before us endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of, of the throne of God. Was it a joy to go to the cross? Not really. Was it a joy to be despised by others, to be beat upon, to be spit upon? Um, no. But he knew what was going to happen when he ended. He wasn't looking at his, his, his immediate circumstance. He was looking at the end goal, the finish line way down there. He knew what was going to happen. And some of those things I have listed here that he knew was going to come is the salvation of all believers. Aren't you, aren't you um, happy for salvation? Without Christ, we have no hope. And he saved us. He knew that one day we would be with him. And that's why he ran his race so that we have a good example. Um, he, one day he would be in heaven and with the redeemed of all the ages. Um, he, will he would reclaim his glory um, that he shared with the Father from eternity past. Um, he knew that there would be a day when there would be a new heaven and a new earth where all the redeemed would be worshiping him. And he knew that the day would come when salvation would be ultimately completed and sin would forever be destroyed. Amen? And Satan would be forever banished and, and perfect righteousness would rule the world. Wouldn't that, isn't that a great day? And that's what his race was for. Um, he, he endured it all for us. But he knew what the end result was, and, and he's our perfect example uh, for us to run our race. That's why he ran. Um, we want to we wanna run um, because of what he did for us. What are they that's going to be when we get to see Jesus in glory and, and realize all that he done for us and what he, what he did for us? And then he's now sitting on the right hand of the throne of God. He, you could say he has his reward now. He's, a, he's the king of kings and lord of lords. And he is living in heaven, interceding for us. We can go to the Lord anytime in prayer. Isn't that amazing that we don't have to go to a person or a priest? Or we can go directly to the throne of God, and, and Christ makes intercession for us. And, and he did that all for us. He ran his race well, and he knew at the end the, the, the reasons for that. And now, um, now we're just waiting one day where we get to be in heaven someday. But you've got to keep on running. You've got to keep on running. Keep on going. Don't give up. Don't give up. I know it's easy to give up. Um, stay in the fight, stay going to church, um, be faithful to the Lord. He, he's wanting you to live for him. And, um, and then lastly, consider his resolve. Verse 3 um, tells us what he endured. It says, for hit, for Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. And I have a list of things that he endured, and we know them. I mean, we don't necessarily have to go over all of them, but you know what he went through. He was born to an unwed mother in Matthew chapter 1. He was born in a stable, Luke chapter 2. He was born to poor parents in Luke 2. He was, his life was threatened even when he was a child. His life was threatened. His birth was the cause of terrible suffering in Matthew chapter 2. Um, as a baby, he was moved and to, to a different place to escape. Um, in, in Luke chapter 2, it also said he was raised in Nazareth, which was in that time a despicable town, and yet he was willing to do that. Um, his father died when he was young in Matthew 13. Um, he, had this, he, he had to support his family, Matthew chapter 13. Um, he had no home or place to lay his head in Matthew chapter 8 and Luke chapter 9. Um, and yet he should have. He should have been born in a palace. He should have been born in a mansion, and yet he was willing to lower himself and be born in a manger in a stable. I, I can't comprehend that. I, I, it's not unfathomable why he would do that for, for filthy people like us, but he was willing to do it. Um, he was hated and opposed by others in Mark chapter 14. They, they didn't like him. They despised him. He was rejected and hated of those that came to hear him speak even in Matthew 13 and Luke chapter 4. Um, people were, would, would uh, try to get him, uh, um, and, and they would say, why are you doing this on the Sabbath, or, or this and that, and they were trying to trap him and, and, and making fun of him, different things. He was, he was betrayed by a close friend, Mark chapter 14. He was left alone, rejected and forsaken by all his friends. He was tried before a high court, 
uh, for treason in John chapter 18. And then, of course, we know he was executed as a common criminal by means of crucifixion. That's what Jesus did for us. Um, there, that's just a few of them. He, he went through so much more. But can you imagine the life he lived in his race was the perfect race. He went through a lot of suffering just for us. And so we can surely run for him. We can run the race for him. He was beaten. Um, he was hit on the head with the with crown of thorns. I can't even imagine. He was spit upon. They ripped his beard. They, they, they uh, the cat of nine tails they wrapped around his back. And, and the torture and the pain and the agony, the Bible says his visage was so marred. And, and, and he took that for us. But, like I said earlier, he knew the end result. It wasn't for that time. He knew what was coming. And we can look forward to that day when we're going to be with him again because he did all of us for us. We've, we've never suffered to this degree like Jesus did. We'll probably never have to suffer these things like he did. Um, um, we, can, we can kind of have our little sufferings now and then, our trials, but nothing like Jesus, Jesus went through. Therefore, we can run with patience the race that's set before us. Um, Jesus has already been around the track. He's already finished the race, he's, and he's, he's able to help us run the race as well. One last portion, Hebrews chapter 4, just a few pages over, Hebrews 4. great verse about what Jesus does for us. Verse 15, it says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Man, that's amazing our, that Christ was tempted just like we are, took all of this suffering and torture on his life, and yet without sin. And now we have the high priest, Jesus Christ, we can go to at any time, and he can help us run our race. I just want to ask you tonight, how is your race progressing? How are you progressing in your race? Um, do you need some encouragement tonight? I want to encourage you to stay in the race, stay fighting for the Lord. Um, let me challenge you to get your eyes on Jesus, not on other people, not on yourself. Get your eyes on Jesus. Stop looking at other runners. Look at, look at your own self and your own race and your own will that God has for you and, and stay in the race. Um, let's, let's look to him. And he wants, to, he wants to meet us someday and, and give us our rewards for what we've done in our race. Um, we're, we're out a little bit early tonight. We're about, ten, we're about 10 minutes early. You guys won't mind that. But, but just consider the race. Consider your race. Are you running for him? Are you, are you staying faithful to him? Don't give up. I know it's tough sometimes. Um, bills come or family problems, sicknesses, cancers, uh, you name it, uh, vehicle problems, uh, family trouble. There's a lot of things that happen. Don't let that discourage you from still living for the Lord. There's a purpose for it. We don't always know on this side what the purpose is for those things. But Christ wants us to run our race with patience. And that patience is just enduring till the end and living for Christ. I, tr I trust that you will live for Christ. Um, we're, we'll be leaving here shortly in a couple months. And, and I want to see you um, serving the Lord, staying faithful, and, live, and, and living out your race, and then training your children to do the same as they grow up as well. I'd love to see that someday when we come back to visit. Um, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessing, and then let's do some business with God tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you that you have set the race before us that we're supposed to run. Lord, we all have our individual races that we have, and, and Lord, we're supposed to follow what your, is, your will is for our individual lives. Thank you for your example that you ran for us. And thank you that you were willing to go to the cross that we might be saved. Lord, we don't deserve it. And, and it's so hard to fathom why you love us so much, so much. And your mercy is so great for us, Lord. But help us to consider that when we think about quitting, when we think about getting away from you, that, that you ran the race. Others before uh, you ran the race, and, and they, they finished well. Help us to finish well and, and stay on our track. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. With your heads bowed, eyes closed, take a minute and just ask the Lord to help you on your race and, and help you to run like you should. Help, help him, uh, ask him to help you to, to stay the course. Help, help, ask him ask to help uh, if you would uh, help you to stay on the course and not get, not get weary, not get off in the weeds, not to quit. Um, you can go ahead and play if you have something there. And just take a few moments. Are you trying to be like somebody else? Are you trying to, to uh, see if you can compete with somebody else? Are you, are you not doing enough, possibly? Do you have some weights um, that may not be sin, but they're causing you not to be as close to Christ as you should? Maybe you have some sin in your life you need to take care of. 
And that'll help you get back on the track. Deal with, just deal with God for just a couple of minutes. Maybe you're not even on the race tonight. Maybe you've never been saved. I, I think I know most people in here that may have been saved, but I don't know all of you. Maybe, maybe that's something you need to even start your course. Um, the first step is um, trusting Christ as Savior. Um, talk to someone tonight about that. Um, be saved before it's too late. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight again and what we've heard. We pray that you would help us to run our race and run it well and not to receive rewards, but that, that we want to give those rewards back to you someday. We want to run our race and, and we want to be a people that you can be pleased with. We want to be used by you. And Lord, help us to do that. Help us to remember you and not to give up. Stay on, our, stay on this long race. It's not a short race, Lord. It's a marathon, but help us to stay till the end. And you'll be waiting for us to cross that line, and, and we'll, we'll praise you and thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming tonight. Pastor is out, so pray for him, and, and he hopes to be back soon. And, and I know he misses you tonight, but pray for them if you would. And uh, stop uh, fellowship with those around you, and have a great week. We'll see you later. Thank <clears throat> you.